Hi everybody, it's Marty. Welcome back to my channel. Um, for anybody that's new, um, I'm a woman of a teen, transgender, transsexual, whatever you want to call it, or they're calling it today, experience. And um, I will pop up a card here that leads you to one of my videos that I talk about my journey from when I was 15, 16 years old, when I started to live authentically um, as a woman or a young girl to um, 56 years old today and I'm married and life's good but it wasn't like that for half of those years it was absolutely crazy so hopefully that will um, help you if you're looking for a story of uh, redemption for lack of a better word and remember please subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet that would really help me out please consider doing so and like the video comment down below I love your comments um, so today I am going to talk about um, one of my most popular topics that people watch on my channel is about SRS or sexual reassignment surgery and decades past because um, there's not a lot of information out there because not a lot of us survive so I'm starting a playlist um, that just involves uh, sexual reassignment surgery or gender confirmation surgery or whatever they call it <laughs> when you're watching this video it might have changed like it's changed like like four different times ever since you know I was a kid um, but yeah it's like I'm starting a playlist so I'll pop up the playlist right here so you can watch that if you want to binge watch stuff and maybe that'll help you if you're considering um, having SRS which is uh, the downstairs surgery and um, you know some transgender people never get it they don't feel like they need it and that's fine um, and so but the downstairs surgery is called vaginoplasty and um, so yeah so that's what we're going to talk about today um, a little bit more in depth about it and for me this is going to be talking about um, dilating decades past and um, because I got a lot of questions I got get a lot of um, great feedback in my comments on those videos of my SRS decades past videos and um, so I just want to share some of that with you so one of the main ones is about dilating so I thought we'd get into this and I'm not going to get graphic about it this is an educational uh, video all of my videos when it comes to SRS and stuff it's not fetish it's not troll so don't even bother or let's do the lion I do my yo I do yoga on this channel too so when we do the line we breathe in love and get rid of everything else and make them run for the hills so now that we got the trolls running for the hills, um, let's talk in an uh, educational mind about dilating. So yeah, dilating for me was um, not something that was really hard for me to do um, you know after I had the surgery and it was in two stages um, you had to have the first one and then a year later you have the second one which was a labiaplasty um, and maybe I'll do another video about that one so yeah because when I had the first one done after everything healed and stuff I was kind of going like why do I need another one and it's like a night some girlfriends of mine sis girlfriends said looks great and um, but I'm really glad that I did do the second one because it definitely gives you um, more character, let's say. Because everybody's different. Every woman's different, you know, um, when it comes to uh, that second stage word. You know what I mean? What's in labiaplasty. So it's like somebody's smile. You know, every, everything's different. So um, anyways, I love my girl and everything like that. So everything was good. I started dilating right away, um, 
you know, it's the same as it is today, I'm sure. It's like you had to dilate like six times a day or something like that one. And I drove up all the way. My doctor, Dr. Toby Meltzer, was in Portland when I, I had it. So that's, that's how old I am because he's in Arizona now. And I think he's going to retire soon, probably. Um, and don't quote me on that, Toby, if you're watching this. I'm not out now, old you are. Um, so anyways, uh, yeah, a girlfriend of mine drove me back to Vancouver. And I remember, oh my God, I had to dilate like six times a day. So we were stopping in like, you know, in the car doing it. Um, and I, oh God, it was a funny story. We're driving up and we're past Oregon. And um, we got the, the police pulled us over. Because <clears throat> my friend was speeding. And luckily, uh, they rolled down the windows and I was like, I was icing myself. And it's like, and they told me that we had surgery down there and all that stuff. And um, didn't really tell, you know, say that it was like trans SRS stuff and everything. And they actually frickin', uh he put on his cherry siren and took us all the way to the Washington border. I couldn't believe it. It was great. Oh my God, the things you could get away with when you're like 30-ish. So anyways, and then I remember going to Hamburger Mary's in Seattle and going in the bathroom, because we ate there, and going in the bathroom and I had to dilate. And I had one high heel against the bathroom door. And anyways, I had to do it like that. Because you have to do it, right? And, um, and I was so freaked out of like it like closing because it's like, Dr. Meltzer really put it in, our in my head. So I was really glad that I did. And you know, there was a three stage dilating system type of thing. And I can't remember exactly how it went, but within about six months, the bleeding stopped and um, I was up to the last dilator and um, didn't even have to use the first one and everything was fine. And, um, uh, and I was enjoying myself and, uh, you know, it, it was, everything was functioning fine. And it took about, God, I think it was a year and a half before I had my first experience uh, with a guy. And, um, and it was really painful and all that stuff. And, and um, you know, and I, you know, it's very common for you to bleed, so no, don't freak out if that happens. And, um, and my friend, she's so funny, this older trans woman, and I called her and I said, oh my God, I was like, I, and I bled and on my sheets and stuff. And she's going, well, this is what you, do, what you do. She was Italian. She says, in Italy, once we lose our virginity, we put our sheets off the balcony and, um, and all, all the people in the neighborhood like bang their pots and pans. <laughs> Yeah, so I didn't do that, even though I was living in Little Italy in, in Vancouver. Um, so anyways, uh, yeah, so that's one scary thing that I think that, just so you know, um, that that's very common for it to happen, so don't freak out about that. And then the next thing that happened, and I'll probably do a whole other video about that, was that it took, it was about three years after the surgery that I was with somebody on a regular basis, um, a partner, uh, um, um, I had a long-term relationship for the first time with my authentic down there. And, um, and we were pretty regular with it. And oh my God, I couldn't believe it. One, one time, all of a sudden I thought I was gonna die. And it was like with um, clenching up and stuff like that. And I had my first, oh, you know what I mean? And I actually thought it was, an old wise tale that you could have it and um and me and uh, my friend tiggy who's not with us you know you know trans suicide you know when we're young and she um her and i would listen to these uh transsexual women on the streets and stuff and, and they would talk about it and we just kind of go mm, okay mm -hmm. and i didn't believe it and um and then when it happened to me, I actually called, it was a gender clinic where, when I was going through this. Um, now it's all community-based in Canada. 
So anyways, I, I made, I called uh, the nurse at the gender clinic the next morning and went there and I told her what happened. I couldn't believe it. And I said, how the hell do, does this happen? And then this nurse said that they keep the prostate in for, uh, for you to achieve that uh, pleasure and also, you know, so you don't become incontinent. And also, uh, women, uh, cis women are born with, um, look it up, Google it. I couldn't believe it either. Um, with, uh, it's called a female prostate. I can't remember the medical term, but there is one. And I don't, and they say it's close to the G spot. Some people say it is the G spot, whatever. But oh my goodness, I was so surprised and happy, you know, that I had that. So, anyways, I had a very, very healthy sex life. Maybe I'll get into more of that in another video. Um, because it was healthy, um, and then, um, yeah, I'll fast forward to the dilating part. But then I got married in 2007, and, um, I stopped dilating, because I was married, and I was with this guy, and, and, it, uh, this husband, <laughs> this guy, sorry, it was one of my greatest teachers, um, unfortunately, it was so, such a horrible breakup, and, um, uh, yeah, we were regular, not as regular as he wanted, because there was other issues happening, like he was a drinker and I wasn't, and, um, uh, but it was like every Sunday at like two o'clock type of thing, like, you know, I felt like I was in the 50s. Uh, so anyways, I ended up um, leaving him and the divorce was so horrible and he was so mean, so mean. I was so hurt. I was, uh, I thought for sure he was going to like try to, you know, fight to keep me back or, you know, make concessions or whatever because his drinking was out of control. It's just, just was. And, but some people can do that until they drop dead, right? It's not like he was skid row drunk. Like he, he was a professional worker, like with, um, you know, a big job, everything like that. But, you know, two bottles of wine a night is just, I don't know, you know what I mean? And, and some port maybe. Uh, anyways, um, so anyways, I left him. And so, and the divorce was so evil and, um, the stuff that was said in the divorce, because he really, really fought it, it took like two and a half years, three years, and I could not dilate. I could not dilate, and, and when I did, well, the, I should say, it was really, really hard to dilate, because I equated, and I talked about this in the other videos, but I equated it with um, my husband and love and everything, so, I would just fall into tears when I have to do it because, you know, I, you know, I had really turned intimacy into a, a sacred thing, right? Which I believe it is, and you know, people can do it for sport, great, right? whatever. I can, um, and um, so yeah, it was really hard to do it. And I remember I was living on my own back in Vancouver again and um, I think every like maybe six months I would you know dilate and see how, what was going on and everything just went whoop, you know type of thing and um, uh, but the longer the, the the longer the divorce took the less I would dilate I was so traumatized and um, you know it's and I was falling into depression and stuff too it's very easy to not take care of yourself when you're depressed and going through stuff like that. You know, to dilate, it was just, it just really bummed me out to do it. So, um, then fast forward, the divorce is over, and then I met uh, my Graham, who uh, we, we married two years ago. And then it was like, oh my God, I can't, I couldn't even like make love properly to him because Things have been really, really uh, not taken care of. It is really hard for me to dilate now. But I have been consistent with it in the last three weeks.
and I've been married for almost two years because I had to get these redone because I had capsule contracture and and then I had a shoulder and rib injury so I've just been getting back into my yoga getting back into my body and doing some live videos and actually copying to it has really helped and so I thought why not make a video about the dangers of not dilating even decades past and um, and even if I got away with it for like months and months and months and then I would just do it no problem it might be like a little you know uncomfortable at first but most of my cis women friends say they experience the same thing so yeah I just thought it was really important to talk about in length um, for you persons that have have had it maybe in your first you know five six years and you think you can kind of like just let it be for a while don't don't really really take care of oneself self-care self-care is having that hot bath and you know with Epsom salts and you know doing what you need to do you know and um, and enjoying yourself so yeah today it's getting better and this is kind of like a diary um, a dilating diary um, at the end of this um, if you've gotten to the end of this let me know and maybe ask how I'm doing um, and I'll make another video about it because it's been three weeks now and I'm back to dilator number two and things are good you know there's been no trauma or anything to it which is good and luckily I don't I don't feel like I've lost any depth and um, and enjoyment has happened too from it so um, yeah that's about it I don't want to get into TMI um, this is an educational video because uh, this is what we go through and I wish that there was you know, a woman talking about this, when I was watching YouTube back in, when I was divorced, you know, I only started putting up videos um, a little over a year ago. So, um, yeah, so that's it. I'm 56 and I'm starting all over again in my dilating department with my SRS. And, but it's good. It's okay. I know I'm getting there. It's kind of like your earlobes. I, and I mentioned that in another video. I have, I have a third uh, piercing in my earlobe. And every once in a while I use it. And it's kind of hard to get into. But eventually I do. And it's fine. So, um, yeah, it's kind of like into that. A lot of people have mentioned that to me. I think even a doctor had mentioned that to me because every, everybody's different the way that we try to close up. But you know that when people go, oh, it's a wound and it'll just heal up. No, it doesn't do that. It's like, don't worry about it. Yeah, if it's fresh off the grill, sure, you know, type of thing. But um, no, don't listen to all those scaremongers and stuff. It's like, you know, if you're, you know, you know, three years plus type of thing, it's like, you know, if you, if you skip a if you skip a week and don't freak out about it because your mind is going to make yourself clench up watch one of my breathing videos and relax relax those muscles because you know we have to have the hot bath and relax and everything it makes all the difference in the world my fear uh was the main thing like i was just going oh my god oh my god oh my god what's going to happen what's going to happen and it's like when i did it on sunday two days ago it was like, whoa, what a difference from just last week. So, so yeah, there is hope. So let you guys know that. So don't join the Barbie binary. Anyways, this is going to be part of my uh, playlist of um, sexual reassignment surgery decades past. And um, feel free to share it with your friends if you find it informative. Get the word out there. If you know other women that 
um, talk about video, have videos talking about this stuff, let me know so I can add it to my playlist. Um, because I think it's really important. Um, well, I not, I don't think it, it is important. It's frighteningly important, you know. Like, our Ministry of Health, I just fought with them about getting these redone. And everything's supposed to be paid for up here. And we couldn't wait any longer because my pain was so bad with these. And then, um, and now they're kind of having meetings and everything in, in Victoria. That's our capital city of British Columbia because they're like going, oh, it's like, I guess that is like a part of um, transgender health care. It's like, you know, later on in life. And it's like, because nobody lived. It's like nobody lived or, and, or nobody ha who has lived has come out of the shadows to, to make some noise about it because I don't blame them. Look at all the crazy crap that's happening out there. But I'm strong. I don't care. My mantra is whatever, what anybody thinks of me is none of my business. And you can't get through that. Bing, 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 bing. Yep, doesn't happen. Don't waste your time. Settings are on high. Mm. When it comes to comments and everything, <laughs> I don't even see it. And if something does squeak through, I just... Anyways, I love you guys. Um, it's a long video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, be safe. Uh, congratulations if you just got your SRS um, and um, or if you're thinking about it hopefully this helped you and I'm really happy today I wouldn't have had it any other way some of these videos that I see on here they're going oh I wish I didn't get it it's like because you know you really need to have really good therapists and stuff to talk to to really know that you're doing the right thing because a lot of people can live non off. My doctor even said that, my psychiatrist, when I was young, you know, she even asked me that, I remember, and I was just like, what? No. That's like, God. So that's it. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, I love you. Please comment down below, and um, please like the, like the video. Like it, like it, like it. And, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. And is that it? Yeah, that's about it. I love you. And on my videos, I bow it out. Namaste, which means the highest good in me recognizes the highest good in you, and we are all one. So, namaste.